Alrighty, welcome to chapter six. In this chapter, we're going to be modeling the the tail fin area. So, you know, we're getting really close to actually finishing the vehicle off. Aside from the tail fin, we've just got the interior of the cockpit to do. So let's go ahead and get started. In this particular video, I'm going to be focusing on this area of the tail fin, so kind of the the forward section, and then we'll do the midsection, and then finally finish it off with the actual actual tail fin itself. The first thing that I want to do on this is to focus on some of the most prominent details, and that is these two big pieces of tubing right in here, which really kind of, you know, if we go over to the other layer to view our concept, really make up a lot of the major detail within the, the tail area. So I want to do those first. And the way that we'll kind of do that is we'll probably uh, work on this piece first, and then we may or may not do this these two pieces out of tubing. I think we, uh, we'll probably do them out of curves like we did a lot of these tubings. We'll probably add some other tubings in here and then just kind of try and pull everything together until it starts to look pretty good. So let's first focus on these pieces. I'm going to go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode and then I'm going to hit shift space and let's go ahead and add in a subsurf modifier and then immediately we'll increase the level to two, turn on optimal display and hit W and shade smooth. Let's also go ahead and maximize the view. And let's first, uh, looking at this, we can see that there's kind of some, uh, looks like a flexible tubing portion right in here. And then this piece is a harder tubing. So what I'll do is let's first add in a loop cut uh, right along here. We'll sharpen that up. Same thing here. And then I'm going to do that again on this section. And again, right here. And then we'll do that on both of these. So right in there and right in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this area and this area. I'm going to hit E to extrude. Immediately I'm going to right click, which again only cancels the movement, not the extrusion. And then I'll hit Alt S to scale those in. And then I can go and hit E to extrude again, right click, Alt S to take them in just a little bit more, which will give me a sharper edge. And then I can go ahead and hit Control R and we'll just add in, let's say, six edge loops there and then I can go ahead and select every other one uh, looks like I didn't actually add in quite enough so let's undo that uh, looks like we need to go ahead and add in seven edge loops so there's two three four five six and seven because then I can just select every other one here from one side to the other and then I'll hit alt s scale those up and that immediately gives me the impression of flex tubing now in order to kind of solve this area right here I'm just going to move this over along the x-axis and then I might move it up along the z-axis as well just so that this is kind of a little bit straighter and gives a better impression there and let's go ahead and repeat that step then for the other side so again it's uh, we'll select both of these then I'll hit E to extrude right click alt s to take it in and then I'll do that again take it in just a little bit further and then I'll go ahead and add in seven edge loops so there's four, five, six, and seven. Select every other one. And then I can just Alt S, scale them up to get my flex tubing. So very quick and easy to actually add in, actually a fairly significant amount of detail as far as that's concerned. And then let's go ahead and add in another edge loop right here and an edge loop right there. Sharpen those up. And that looks pretty good. Let's do the same thing over here, but on this side, I'm gonna give it uh, the nice bevel and so we'll add in a loop down to right there another one right there and then the same thing on the bottom side about like that and then we'll sharpen this up as well on both sides just about like that okay now I'm gonna add in another loop right up to there since I forgot it on that side and that now looks pretty good we could go ahead and sharpen these. So I'll select this, hit Shift D, 0 0.8, and do the same thing on each of these actually. And on this side, there we go. A little bit better effect. Uh, I wanna add in, first I wanna slide this loop over a little bit, make it a little bit sharper. And then I'm gonna select each one of these corners and I'll Shift D, 0 0.8, sharpen them just a little bit, okay? I want to even this loop out just a bit. So currently, you'll notice that it's kind of uneven. So let's just take that down. 
three to go to our side view. And I want to just rotate this around the z-axis and a little around the x-axis just so it lines up a little bit more with the original pipe piece. There we go. So it doesn't look skewed like it did. And maybe we'll do the same thing right here. Just a matter of getting it selected. We can hit period on our number pad to just zoom right into our selection. There we go. Much better. Okay. Uh, looking at this, let's go ahead and I want to add in a little bit more detail here. Um, these pieces are probably good. Let's go over to another layer just so we can see it real quick. Uh, I want to add in these, or actually we'll do that on the next section right now. Let's go ahead and focus on this stuff down here. So the first thing I'll do is let's grab one of our tubing pieces. Maybe say, well, I guess I, I guess it's all of these. Um, is there one of these that, uh, there we go. That'll work. Shift D, duplicate this over, and then hit G, Y, bring it over here. We can rotate it, move it up, hit tab to go into edit mode, and I want to just go ahead and select this, hit X, delete the selected, and let's go ahead and select this. I'm going to hit S, X, and 0. Let's also go ahead and select these two, hit W, subdivide, put one right in the center, because then we can select this and delete those. Then we can go ahead and add in our mirror modifier, and set everything to clipping and it looks like we just need to hit control a apply the rotation that way it will mirror across correctly now you will notice that we're not getting a perfect merge right down here and part of that is just we need to fix that just kind of bring this down a little bit we could maybe increase the merge limit to solve that a little bit but more than anything we're probably just going to need to do some tweaking from time to time when we're working with that piece and actually you know what now that i just thought of it we actually don't even want this to be merged because we're going to move this over along the x-axis after removing the clipping. We'll move it along the y-axis. Right along like that. Whoops. Okay, and I'm going to extrude this along the y-axis again because then we can go ahead and bring this down right in here and we're going to send this straight back like we had originally planned with this piece right in here. So that looks pretty good. Uh, we'll move this down along the z-axis a little more, take it in a bit more. Let's go ahead and select everything and I'm gonna hit Alt S and I had to first hit comma to scale around the individual center. There we go. Move those over like that. Then what I need to do is go ahead and add in another piece on here. We're just kind of roll that around. There we go. Now that fits. And then we'll bring this out along the x-axis a little bit more. Take it up. Then let's go ahead and pick out the next piece of tubing. We've got another one right in here. Which, in fact, let's actually take these. And we're going to bring them in or out along the x-axis here. And then let's actually go ahead and hit Shift D. Duplicate that in, hit Alt-S to scale it down until it fits nicely in there without overlapping on either side. There we go. And then we can go ahead and extrude this up to about, actually we'll go to about here, rotate around, bring it over, bring it over along the x-axis. Take this handle or this point here along the Y bring those out, grab this, hit three to go to side view, and then we'll go ahead and extrude this around. And I'm not actually going to follow the concept exactly on this. I'm actually going to go ahead and just take it back inside this piece. So now I'll move this in along the x-axis about there, move this in, rotate around the Z, rotate this around the Z. And so that way it's kind of feeding back inside the the tail fin there. Bring those around. And that looks pretty good. Okay. And maybe on, you know what, on this one, let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit more. And we're going to extrude this. We're going to rotate it. 
Now we're going to send this one back along the tail fin as well. So once again, we're not going to be following the concept exactly, but in the end, we'll be getting a little bit more surface detail. Then I just want to rotate this around the Z axis, move it over. And that looks pretty good. I can go ahead and rotate this around the Z axis a little bit. And I do apologize if you keep hearing a clicking in the background. Uh, it would seem that my dog is a little excited about something and keeps running back and forth across my floors. Okay, so there's that. And then I think what I want to do, actually, actually, I'm going to move this down just a little bit more. Also move this down a little bit more just so that this isn't rising up quite as much. There we go. That looks good. And then let's go in here. And we've got some pieces in here that I want to do, namely these. And not completely sure how I want to do it, but I think what I'll do is to go ahead and select this piece, hit tab to go into edit mode, and then I'm going to grab, say, these two vertices. I'm going to hit shift D, bring them down over here, rotate it around, and then I'm going to hit E to extrude, move it over. And you'll notice that I, I right clicked and then hit G to go into grab mode just so I wasn't moving along the constraint in normal. I'll also go and hit S, X, and 0 to scale in along the x-axis. We'll also go ahead and extrude this once along the x-axis, and then I'll hit X and delete the faces. I can also delete the faces on the back side, hit X and delete those faces. And there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in, say, an edge loop up to this edge, another one to this edge, and this edge. Select everything, W and Shade Smooth. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and add in, say, a loop right here, another one right in there, and then I'll select these. I'll hit E to extrude, and then Alt-S to bring those in. And you'll notice I'm getting some crisscrossing here. And so what I can do is select this vertex and this vertex, hit Control-E, oops, that one, Control-E, edge slide, take it all the way up to that one, and then control and edge slide and slide back a little bit. That way it'll even them out and make sure I don't have anything overlapping. And I can repeat that on this side here. So control E, edge slide, take it all the way up, and then control E and edge slide and take it over just a little bit. Okay, and then I need to go ahead and strengthen that up. So I'll add in another loop on this side. Another one right here, and then on each side across here. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab this tubing. I'm going to select, say, these two pieces, hit Shift D, right, or Shift D, move it over, Alt S to scale it down, and then I'll go ahead and select this piece, hit SX, zero, and I'll do the same thing with this one just so that they're perfectly straight. I'll go and select both of them and scale them together to zero along the x-axis. Then I'll just take this. I'm going to bring it up right over here. That looks pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and select the whole thing. I'm going to shift D, bring it down. And this time I'm going to go scale this down a little bit. Then I'll extrude again. I might go ahead and say subdivide these two. Get a little bit more curve in there, a little bit more curve in there. Okay, that looks good. I think I might take this one over a little bit more. Take this one over like that, scale it up a bit. And that then looks pretty good. And I think I want to well, let's see. Just kind of figuring out all the detail in here. I'm going to go ahead and select this loop. I'm going to hit Shift D, right click. Uh, actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, I'm going to add in another loop right over here. And then I'm going to hit Shift D, right click. And then I will select the loop actually attached to it by just Alt right clicking, hit X, delete the edge loop. So this way I have a loop that's perfectly in place here, such that now I can just go ahead and hit E to extrude, right click, S to scale it up. Control L to select the rest of the loop, and then I'll hit E to extrude, and it'll extrude right along the normals, fitting right in with that shape. So then I can just add in a loop there. 
add in a loop there, and now I have a nice separate band on that piece. Okay, just adds a little extra detail. You'll notice I'm getting some normal problems here, so let's select everything and hit Control N. We'll fix those normals right away. Okay, that looks pretty good. What I might go ahead and do is let's just say select, hit Control Tab, select this face, Shift S, cursor to selected, and let's also go ahead and click View and align view to selected to the top, I think. Yeah, there we go. Now we're aligned perfectly with that face. And I can now just hit Shift A, add in a circle. On the circle, I'm gonna hit F6. I'll take the size way, way down. I'm gonna click Align to View. And then I'll also choose just say six vertices on this will be just fine. And I can hit Control Tab go back to vertex mode, then hit three and go back to side view. You notice it's perfectly aligned right in there. So now I can just go ahead and scale it down. I'll hit E to extrude to, to, and then scale it again, such that I'm left with a ring of faces. With this ring of faces in, I can maybe scale up a little bit, bring it out along the x-axis, and I can go and hit E to extrude, take it up. I'll maybe select the interior loops and hit Alt S, or actually, you know what? Uh, we'll just hit S and double tap Hmm, let's see. I guess I don't really have a normal on them, so that's okay. Because I'm going to select this, scale it down, select this loop, and scale it down. Oh, actually, I'm going to delete those vertices, because I actually don't want them there. Select everything, W, and Shade Smooth. I can select these loops, and then I will add in another loop right up to that edge, about like that. And then I'm going to select this whole piece, and I'm just going to move it over approximately around that tubing. Maybe scale it down just a bit. There we go. And I can go and hit Shift-D, duplicate it, bring it over for this one. And that will just add in a good extra little bit to that tubing. Save the file. Looking good. Uh, I want to add in these ridges on here. So first off, I've got this piece. I'm going to add in a loop, bring it around like that, add in another loop, take it about like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's see, we'll do the same thing. We'll add in, say, a loop to about right there and another loop to about right there. And then let's select these. I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S to scale it down. And then I'll do the same thing here. E to extrude, Alt, right click, Alt S, scale it down, and then I'll add in perimeter loops. And then what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to select, say, this loop, and this loop, and this loop. I'm going to hit Y, and that will immediately split them apart. And the reason that I want to do this, I'm going to go and hit Alt S to scale them up along the normals just a little bit. And then I'm going to hit W and subdivide smooth. And the reason that I hit subdivide smooth is that way it actually maintains its circular shape. And I'm going to go ahead and do this twice. And the reason that I'm going to do this now is let's go and hit shift H. I can now go in here, select each one of these edge loops one at a time, click delete the edge loops. But what I'm left with now is a much higher poly circle that is lined up with my original mesh. It's for the most part, perfectly circular. You'll notice it's not quite perfectly circular, but that's okay. I'm gonna hit Control Tab, go into face mode, and then I'm gonna go in here and just select every other face. And this will allow me to extrude some ridges in here fairly easily. So we'll do this, get that, and then we're gonna do the same thing right over here. It doesn't really matter which face you start with, you know, since this isn't particularly aligned to any one thing, we can really just grab one. And as long as then we get every other one, we should be fine. And then that one there. And then I want to go ahead and hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S to scale them up. And actually, let's just take them up just a little bit. And we'll hit E to extrude again, Alt S, take them up a little bit more. Let's select, uh, go back into vertex mode. And I'm first going to select the front faces of all of them, hit X and delete the faces. That way they're nice and square. 
and I'll do the same thing over here, X, delete the faces, and then I can go and hit Alt-H, and there we go. Now I've got some nice ridges on there. Now they might be a little bit big currently, so, so I can just select one, scale it down, and then I'll select the other one, scale it down just the tiniest bit. I don't want to do too much or it's not going to fit inside the loop there. So there we go. That looks really good. And... I might also go ahead and add in, say, a band right next to each one of these. So right up there, right up there, add a loop. I could go ahead and add another loop right there. And then I'll select these two, hit Ed extrude, Alt S up just, just enough about right there. And then I can go ahead and select each one of these, hit Shift E, 0.8. And this one, shifty, 0.8. That looks good. And I'll do the same thing right over here. And you'll notice they really don't need to be exact, but if you can get them fairly close, then you should be good to go. So there I just, I extruded and pressed Alt S and then just repeated that twice. And then again, I'm gonna hit select a loop or by alt shift or alt right click or alt shift right click if I need to select multiples and then just shift E and 0.8. So there we go. That adds some really good detail right in there. Um, I would like to go ahead and on these, I don't really like the way they're fitting right now. So I'm going to go ahead and select these and we're going to create these out of curves again. Delete all these vertices. There we go. And on this piece, I'm going to go ahead and select this whole piece along with this one and this one. I'm going to go ahead and deselect this front half here, deselect that vertex, and then I'm going to move it over along the x-axis there. And that will give me just a little bit more room to play with. And I actually need to do the same thing with this one. And again, I will go ahead and deselect that piece right in there. Whoops. Deselect everything in there. And then I can just go ahead and actually, you know, I'll deselect all those as well. And then I'm just going to turn on O for my proportional editing tool. And I'm going to change this over to connected such that it will only affect these vertices right in here and not the other pipe. And then I can just go ahead and rotate this. Maybe bring it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to do that same thing on this one. And again, I will deselect this, and then I'll deselect all of that. Rotate around the z-axis, move it over. Okay, that looks much better. So that way I've got a little bit more room to play with there. I'm going to go ahead and select this, hit tab, go in edit mode. I'm just going to select, say, these two handles, Shift-D to duplicate, right-click, hit P to separate by selection, and hit Tab. Then I can select that mesh. I'll go ahead and move it over a little bit right in here. And I'll hit Tab to go in back in edit mode, move it over along the x-axis. Let's go ahead and hit Alt-S to scale up approximately right. I can go ahead and turn off proportional editing as well. And then let's just grab these two, rotate them around, move it over here. And I'll just take this right. I'm going to hit SX and zero. Make sure that's straight. Bring it in. We'll go ahead and Alt S up just a little bit more. And then I can just bring this around like so. Rotate that around the Y axis right up to there. We'll maybe bring this one down here, scale it. I can select the whole thing, Shift D to duplicate, bring it up, move it over along the X, just position it right inside the other piece. And then I'll pull this one down to here. And in fact, this one I don't need the extra segment, so I'll just delete it. 
bring that over. The same thing with this one, maybe just so that it's fitting the angle of the, these two pieces a little better. There we go. That looks pretty good. And in fact, you know what? That one looks. Hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to add in a little bit more depth on these. And we're just going to take this straight back through here, rotate this around the Z axis, scale this down. So now it's just a matter of tweaking it until it fits just about right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak that bar to then come out a little bit less. Or actually, you know, I can just move this back in here. And it may intersect with the body mesh a little bit, but you really can't tell. And frankly, it looks okay. So then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Rotate this around, maybe scale it up a little bit, bring it down here. I'll go ahead and extrude this along the y-axis a bit more just to ensure that, you know, a view, viewed from all angles, it looks like it's moving back continuously. Move this back a little bit so it's not intersecting right in there. And there we go. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to save my file. And I think what I'll do, just add in a little bit of extra work in here to make it look good is we're going to kind of take take a note from this section right in here where it looks like this is just kind of rigid and we're going to say right in here we're just going to add in a series of edge loops about like that and then from Actually, you know what? We're going to undo that. Because then I'm going to select this piece. I'm going to hit Shift H. And then let's go ahead and just for practical. What is that edge? Oh, that's that one. We'll just move that. Okay. An easy way to fix this is I want to just move it towards the cursor. So let's just add in a loop here. Take it right into there where it's intersecting, then select this, hit X, and delete vertices. So there we go. Now that's no longer sticking through. And what I want to do... Okay, actually, you know what? We're just going to add in these loops. Do it like this. Excuse me. And then we'll do the same thing right over here to be about the same density there. And then I'm going to go ahead and select... Actually, no, I really am not happy about wasting that many polys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into vertex mode. I'm going to select this edge loop to this edge loop, to this edge loop right there, and then on through to this one. Yes. And I'm just going to hit V. Oh, I can't perform ripping that way. So instead, I'll just select all these pieces, select these pieces. Then I need to go in here, select these vertices. and that vertex, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Y and split that. So this way it's split right at a seam where you're not really gonna notice. And what I can do is then I'll just move this up along the Z axis a little bit, back along the Y axis a little bit. That way, if I ever remove doubles, you won't ever know. And just make sure that's the piece that I think it is, and it is. Okay. I'll go ahead and select this. I'm just going to pull it up a little bit. There we go. That way you'll never, never know. And you really won't ever see that seam, but just in the case that you would, let's go ahead and move this up. And then I'll select this loop. And... We'll just pull that up through there. There we go. So there, you've got a subtle seam there that could just be two pieces of metal interlocking but you never know. And what it really allows me to do then is get some topology control. So now I can go in here, add in all these loops that I want and 
you can't see it throughout the rest. So now I can go in here, select every other face loop. And hit E to extrude, right click, and Alt S to push those along the normals. Except I'm only going to push out a little bit, and then I'll do it again like that. There we go. Now hit Alt H, view everything. That adds in some good extra work right in there. And that looks pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and do just a little bit more work right here. So again, I'm going to hit Shift H, hide my mesh, and... Okay, now I want to just add in a little bit more work right in here. And so I think maybe once again, I might separate the mesh. Um, let's see. No, we're not. Oh, actually, yeah, let's go ahead. Select this edge loop to this edge loop. Onto this edge loop. And we'll just select all that right in there. Actually, you know, let's just go straight across here. That'll be a little easier. And then we'll select all that to that, that, and that, and that, and that. And then we're just going to, yet again, hit Y to split that. And this time we're just going to pull it in slightly along the Y axis. We can hit Alt S, scale that down, or actually we'll scale it up just the tiniest bit. So then we've got that intersection that you see right in there which really will not cause any problems, but gives us a nice clean mesh. Hit X, delete those vertices. And then I can select this. Okay, all looks good. So you almost can't even tell a difference, but it's nice and separate that way. Particularly once you add in everything else, you know, you'll never know. But what it allows me to do is once again, gives me great top up topology control such that I could go ahead and add in, say a loop right here, then take it straight down, add in another loop right here. And then let me hit, uh, take it in along the x-axis to right there. Deselect this one. Take it into there, into there, there. Oops. There. And lastly, right there. And I can add another loop down. There we go. I can add another one right up to there. Now you'll notice that you definitely see a difference right in here now, but guess what? That area is completely hidden, but you do see that ridge from right in here. So that works really well to give us just a little bit more detail. Uh, I'll also go ahead. I'm going to select these pieces. I'm going to take these over along the Y axis just a little bit more. In fact, we'll do this with all these. Okay. And then right here, I'm going to go ahead and let's just select, let's see, we've got a circle somewhere. Ah, here we go. We've got a piece right in here. I'll just shift D, bring this back, move it over here, scale it down, move it in, take this in along the x-axis, make it a little thicker, scale it down, move it, oops, move it along the Y, up along the Z, there we go. So that way it looks just kind of like a corner piece. And in fact, maybe we'll go ahead and bring it in along the x-axis a bit more. So it's a whole extra support right in there. And that looks pretty darn good. I think we might go ahead and just leave that like it is. Uh, we could go ahead and maybe bring these over along the x-axis a bit more just to kind of even things out, which then allows us to bring these over, get some spacing in between them. Okay, and I think we can go ahead and save our file and call this section complete. So now we're ready to go in, work on the midsection right in here, which includes this really awesome piece right in here that frankly I, I just love. I think it looks really cool. So we'll do all that and keep cranking away. Thanks for watching.